Hey everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jen, and welcome to Devilish Bookworms, the podcast. Where we read and review books and release episodes every Tuesday. This week we have The Sharp Edge of Fate by T.F. Johnson. Yay! Being an assassin in the city of Silverdale is dangerous, even for those most skilled. For 14 years, adhering to a set of rules has helped keep the infamous Belladonna safe. One, always deliver the kill. Two, never let anyone see your face or know your name. Three, stay until the mark is dead. And four, never accept a rush job. When Bella is forced to break one of her cardinal rules, her world is no longer safe. Her world is further turned upside down when her newest target survives and she must team up with him in a matter of life or death for someone important to her. What's an assassin to do? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So Rachel, let's dive right in. All right. So this book, um, when it starts, we meet Piper and she is known as the Belladonna. She's a paid assassin and she's working a job. Um, So we get to see kind of like what she does, how she does it, her signature, etc. cetera. Um, and right off the bat, I love the name Piper. I know that's a, like a, a little note, but like, man, I love the name Piper. Even if I wasn't a slut for Charmed. I still love that name. <laughs> and I was just going to say, and with the, the news of Shannon Doherty, that was sad. But I also did think of Charmed when I, I read that as well. I know. I, I'm i really sad today. And we're just pushing through, you know. Um, yeah. So RIP Shannon. Um, but so I don't get too too uh, emotional on the podcast. Um, so with the Belladonna, we learn a little bit about her life. So Laura is her boss, and we find out very quickly that um, he is not a not what one would call a good guy. He's like the head of the assassins, and he is ruthless. <laughs> um, we also find out that she has a partner slash not partner named Sax um and she hates them both but like she can't kill Lore and I have my own theories of, on this but um she she just she just does not vibe with them she doesn't vibe with the whole team she's really kind of like that odd man out um And she's given a job that's kind of crazy important. And she finds out that it's at the palace, which is actually another one of her rules. No royals. Um, So she sneaks in and barely gets out with her life. So can we talk about her sneaking into the palace real quick? Yes. One of the things that I, I love is the book is very centered around magic all right Mm -hmm. and there was there was a a magical border that was protecting the palace but she found the one weakness in this um this wall okay Mm -hmm. but then she comes in contact with one of the guards because she made a noise and they came running and I have to say that I love the fact that he had an allergy and she picked up on that because he kept sneezing near one of the bushes and she literally dragged him away to make sure he stayed alive. I was just unconscious. I know. I love that part. It's, it's something like that, that makes me kind of fall in love with the character. And I needed that with an assassin. You know, it's hard to fall in love with someone who's going around killing people, you know? (laughs) So that little bit of humanity that she showed right in the beginning was everything. Yeah, it really, like, it lets you know that there's more to her than kind of, like, what meets the eye, you know? That she's a more dynamic character. 
it was like something that most people I think that wouldn't even think about considering you know and she she was like oh, okay let me get him to safety <laughs> yeah and I don't know as someone with a severe allergy it's appreciated when someone pays attention to the little details <laughs> absolutely so yes but um okay I kind of like really resonated with this character I'm just gonna say it right off the bat like with Piper yes and it drove me crazy because of the fact that it was mostly because she didn't trust a goddamn fucking person (laughs) the one time she worked with someone it was like absolutely atrocious and nothing good came of that so I mean it was it was that but she also sat there and comforted her victims as they're dying no shh shh, shh. it's okay don't talk it will make it oh worse. no i loved that because it was like i know that i just kind of stole your thunder but i loved that so much because i don't know you just kind of think that you would want someone there with you you know and she was like listen i'm doing this but it's not personal and i value the the kind of transition you're going through right now so i'll stay with you mm-hmm. yep and she does she stays with them until the last min- uh, minute or last second i should say but i mean it's like even that little bit like yeah it was just to make sure the job got done but at the same time it just again proved that even though she was a- an assassin she still stood for something yeah because she could have just stood next to him she could have just like sat there and watched him die and like no she could you know she comforted them it would have been very easy for her to just like stab him let him suffer and then walk away yeah absolutely and we all saw that type of vibe come from people like lore and sex and um oh could you imagine rat yeah oh jesus <sighs> yeah and iso Ugh. Mm-hmm. well so i have different thoughts on iso i can understand mm-hmm. but i think he still would have been like sliced dice by <laughs> yeah so this person that she was meant to kill his name is alexander rylan and he worked at the palace and she had a heck of a time getting to him she stabbed him with her needle which can we talk about for a second how cool it i thought it was how she described the injections it was like so swift and so quick that she didn't write the needle going in or even her picking the needle out of her pocket or even nothing like that it was literally just like she's you know slid next to him and then all of a sudden she was pulling the needle out it was so quick that like they didn't feel it going in like i loved the way she wrote it because it was like oh snap it's already done yeah it's kind of like you know how nurses try to do it for kids like they the quick stab you're mm, okay fail. you're okay <laughs> yeah they fail usually did i yeah, ever tell but... you that time where i had three nurses pin me down to draw blood Oh my god, no. There was a there was a nurse. So one nurse held my legs, one nurse held one arm, and then the other nurse held my shoulders back. Holy shit. Yeah. You're that squeamish with it or um I was I was not comfortable and they wouldn't let me get comfortable. I was really nervous that time for some reason. Normally I'm fine for the most part. I'm nervous, but like you know, but yeah don't hey hey guys don't hold kids down to get blood drawn um what were we talking about oh okay so rylan um works in the castle and she comes in she injects him with her little needle and then um so she has to flee so she can't stay and watch him so of course in a twist of fate he survives ain't that some shit though I'd be so mad. (laughs) Well, I think her response was perfect. She was like, how are you here right now? (laughs) Yep. 
I would have loved to see her face though. Well, how would you, okay? So I know it's hard to put yourself in 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 someone else's shoes, but like, how did you feel about how he popped back up? I honestly, I love the way that she did that because yeah. it was like no one would have expected that out of him, and I think it was brilliant that she did it that way because it caught her off guard and she's always on guard yeah so it that was important absolutely important yeah i thought it was great it was like i love when things i th- i think i've said this before i love it when things that are mundane or kind of trivial are given great importance and so she's literally like going into a hotel room or whatever and then all of a sudden boom this person that she thought was dead is standing there and then he's like oh so this is where you've been and she's like like all of everything just like crashes around her like what (laughs) yeah and we also found out because of the fact that he didn't die we found out that lore has some pretty extreme consequences for the assassins if they don't follow through so apparently they're given like a timeline and it's like, if you get it done, if you get the job done tonight, you get all of the money and you're good. But if you get the job done, not within the deadline, you your money gets cut in half. And then if you don't do it all, you get cut in half. <laughs> the way that he originally gave her her ultimatum was, that was rough. And then when she came back, after when she's like yeah i got the job done and he's like uh no you didn't (laughs) what he did yeah she's like i want my money he's like oh that yeah i won't be paying that you failed (laughs) yeah and of course you don't fail someone like him without consequences so yeah there's okay so about the this book is the first in a trilogy and i i just know we're gonna get more about lore after like in this in the second or third book books like i know we are and i kind of i'm really excited (laughs) not that i liked him i didn't like his character but he's interesting enough that i'm jazzed to like figure out what i think i know what happened but like what happened Mm mm-hmm so obviously like Ryan Ryland doesn't die he comes looking for her and then um her best friend Abby having disappeared kind of sparks something for him um because he is also looking for someone who has disappeared or been kidnapped and so they kind of they they have this weird like unlikely alliance and like she agrees to not kill him in her mind like to herself um she agrees to not kill him because she needs him to find Abby. And then he thinks that everything is gravy. Although she did try and kill him because he needs her to help him uh, find the person that he's missing. And it's a really cool dynamic to me because like they both know that they can't trust the per- the other person. And so it's like, it's like a really like slow burn, right? It's they, they're really um not trying to trust each other and I feel as though in some books that I've read um or in a lot of books that we've read their kind of unlikely friendship or like this this untrustworthy alliance you know kind of they get over it really quickly and then most of the book like in maybe like the first quarter of the book like they start to trust each other and then it's you know the rest of the book is just them being friends but I feel like this one they both held on to it in a way that to me was more realistic because neither one of them should have been able to trust each other for obvious reasons and I feel as though um I feel as though the author really held on to that and let them open up to each other a little bit at a time in a way that I was like "Mm." that's realistic i can i can dig that you know as opposed to someone just being like oh you're nice to me now i trust you i honestly think you said that perfectly because there was a point 
in the latter half of the book where he sees something about her that she has never shown anybody else Mm -hmm. and i like the moment that he sees it he's like what happened like you let me like i i want to know of you and she just she snaps and she's like that's that's not something i want to do just drop it let it go like we can't have this conversation and i feel like anybody that's ever been through something rough in life is always going to be like that they're never going to want to open up and the way that she just immediately closed down when he got a glimpse of the real her it just it really definitely showed that like truths human nature where we get scared and we shut down like Mm -hmm. oh dude i had a whole fucking note on that section like it literally (laughs) that that one part in the book was absolutely my favorite because i Mm -hmm. of course struggle with that as well like letting someone in is the fucking devil it is literally the absolute worst but especially when you've been through so much to never want to trust someone anyone it's like it's even worse and then like obviously there are people like you that i trust but even still like oh she she had her best friend she loved her best friend's kids and then she finds someone and she closed down and i was like oh yeah understand that (laughs) yeah it's like different versions of yourself that you present to different people yeah perfectly such no you said it perfectly (laughs) no you explained it perfectly (laughs) so i have a feeling or i had a feeling as i was reading the books i was like "Mm, i have a feeling that jen might not like this this aspect or i have a feeling that jen might not like this bit and one of those parts was it was when i realized that the book a lot of the book focuses around her doing day-to-day tasks with the kids. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's very heavy in um, like childcare. You know what I mean? Like she has the kids and it's not one of those books where like the kids are there. We check on them every once in a while and then they go away. Like, no, we have them going to school and coming back from school and having lunch and playing in the garden and um, you know, going ice cream shopping and like all this stuff and throughout that there's a mix of like you know the kids seeing things that maybe they shouldn't um in terms of like um you know the two of them fighting or you know like obviously their mom has disappeared been kidnapped by some man who took her from the house you know like they're seeing things that kids really shouldn't see um and i thought it was cool I thought it was cool how she showed Piper explaining things to the kids and like having that dynamic of the kids, because I feel like a lot of books don't do that. Like I said, they kind of just like check in and out. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if this part is going to like make Jen bored, like, because it's so heavy with like, Oh, we're doing homework. The amount of times that she did homework (laughs) with the kids, (laughs) I was like, I didn't mind it, but I was like, I wonder how Jen's feeling right now. (laughs) So it didn't exactly bother me because I like some of the aspects of um, like there was a moment with Caleb where he looks at her and he goes, you're not going to disappear too, right? And my heart literally just like shattered and I actually, oh. I hate to admit this, but I I shed a single tear. <laughs> oh, one single solitary tear. Ooh, one it, single salty tear is all they'll ever get out of this crap, baby. <laughs> I tried sucking it back up like Mr. Crab does. No, no, I'm not going <laughs> to cry. <laughs> but no, it was just like, it was one of those moments where, you know, when a kid says something that innocent it just it makes your heart just feel all the feelings and it just fuck those feelings but it was really good 
Um, but there were parts like when they were in the apartment doing the homework and he started throwing a fit because he couldn't figure out multiplication. I was like, okay, yeah, that this is like, this is just flashbacks of when my daughter was going into like fifth grade and I just wanted to tear out all my hair. <laughs> I see. I love that part. I love the fact that she explored Caleb's um, anger because yeah. I know that I know that you don't like it when I die, when I you know like like analyze everything, but like <laughs> those are things that really do make you know little kids angry. And like when you talk about kids who are in the foster system or kids who are you know um, from broken homes or or whatever, when they're angry, this is the stuff that they see that makes them angry. And I think that she, um, I really like that she took the time to kind of explore that and how Piper dealt with it. And and not even how Piper dealt with it, frankly, how Alec dealt with it. Um, And those are like, okay, so I love how Johnson wrote the mundane things. So she's descriptive without being boring to me. It was kind of the same thing like with Brian Way's book. Um, like the whole time, even in like the the boring things, quote unquote boring things, like I was interested without being annoyed, you know? Mm-hmm. So no. I dug it. It's not that I, I, I got bored or anything because there was enough going on in this book to keep me not bored. Uh, so I wouldn't say that the mundane parts were necessarily boring but it was just for me it just reminded me like it took me out of the story because I kept having flashbacks of my reality you know this yeah. like some aspects of my life so it's just like <laughs> half the time when I was reading I was hearing mother <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like you know I'm reading about a kid that's having a temper tantrum about not wanting to go somewhere and then all of a sudden I hear mother can I go to this place or can I do this and I'm like no you never let me do anything fun it's just like <laughs> so well you know I meant as- so I meant <laughs> yeah go ahead go ahead nope go ahead what were you saying um, no, so I meant for like, so more, most of the time, I feel like when I'm reading a book and they're going through like the mundane things, I get bored. You okay, know, it's gotcha. kind of like, okay, so like we're we're getting up, we're getting dressed, we're going to the store, like blah, blah, blah like can we get the show on the road? Mm-hmm. And for some reason, like, um, and I feel like those are the times where I'm like, oh, this is unimportant. This is unimportant information. Like, why are we here? Um but for me, for some reason, like this one, she she did it in a way that I loved the mundane things. Okay. And littlest details are sometimes the most important for this book. And I love yes. that. Yes. And I feel like, okay, so this kind of goes into a little bit of like how I love her style of writing because of the fact that like her last week I I mentioned how I want the authors to trust that I'm smart enough to understand things and this author does not over explain so like when she says fate instead of god you know and when she says damn you to the winterland without explaining that the winterland is bad and you know and later on in the book like way later on we figure out what winterland is with context clues so like i love when authors do this because it shows that the author trusts her audience to be smart enough to use context clues and like i know and respect that some readers want all the information to give us or all the information given to us right up front but like to me that's not realistic like in everyday conversation, we don't over explain. Like if you're mid conversation, you wouldn't say, do you remember when we went with your brother Gerald to the lake? 
you'd just be like, you know, do you remember when we went with Gerald to the lake? Like, that's what I love. Say it normally and then give context clues as to who Gerald is and trust that I'm smart enough to figure it out. And like, she did that, you know, like in one page or one chapter, she'll, she would give a tiny, tiny little breadcrumb. And then six chapters later, she, she would expand on it the tiniest little bit. And then another chapter later, she would give us a little, little bit more. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it. I, to me, the way her pacing was, was perfection. Yeah, she breadcrumbed the fuck out of us. <laughs> yep. yep. But it was it was done well it really was because it kept me entertained it kept me in the story and it kept me invested like um there there's a lot of times where i just i give up because i i just i don't fucking care but there was there was parts of the story that i needed the holes filled in for i'd like in if less i read it i wouldn't have gotten those and it would have drove me nuts personally Mm -hmm. there's still holes obviously because there's more more to come right well i want to know um there was a part in the book or there's an aspect of the book and i know that i don't i never want to give everything away but there is a a part of the story where the characters get these little uh, tattoos for lack of a better term Mm -hmm. um which are their links to immortals immortals um and i thought that that was really I i thought it was really cool and she didn't explain it literally at all and i feel like we're gonna get a whole lot of explanation in the second book Honestly, I think that was one thing that did actually drive me nuts because I was looking for the explanation and never got it. I don't know why I hate explanations so much. <laughs> I don't know, but it <laughs> it's those loose ends. Like the, if there wasn't like a tiny little or a cute little bow to tie that one up. And <laughs> I just don't, don't like that. I love it. And I live for it. I crave it. <laughs> I know you do. The it, more a book or a movie withholds information from me, the more feral I get for it. <laughs> and see me, I I start overthinking everything and like it's just it brings me down a rabbit hole that sometimes I can't be pulled out of and it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And your poor brain always goes to the worst case scenario. It really does. It really <laughs> Like, okay, when she couldn't find the kids. I was like, they're murdered. They're murdered everywhere. (laughs) I started freaking out. I was like, oh, my God, did they take the kids? Did they hurt the kids? Oh, my God, where are the kids? I started to spiral. And then, yeah, just wow. But I love that because, like, it, it brings us into, like, we're not just being told that you know the that you know piper's sad or scared like we feel it because of the fact that we're invested in the kids too because like the kids are adorable which by the way like abby has like straight brown hair and her you know look is alluded to and her son has like darker skin and her daughter has lighter skin and i just felt like they were the cutest i was just picturing the most beautiful little mixed family it made me so happy but anyway so like to me when when she was doing that it 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 makes me more invested you know because instead of it just being like oh she's sad she's scared she's looking for the kids it's like my heart drops you know and then like my skin starts to crawl and Mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of I, I think that's why I love slow burns too and this like this situation between her and Rylan really just it just it just has me it has me by the heartstrings and it's like 
it was done so slow and so subtly that there was not one moment where it was like, oh my God, this person's my new best friend. It was like, you had a moment of like, holy crap, when did I start caring whether he lived or died? Or holy crap, when did he become important to me? Like, then you have to go through all, all of the memories and be like, when did it happen? When did that happen? <laughs> Oh, yes. I have no words at the moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did like their their back and forth behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, there was one point where she started calling him Alec. That's his, uh Started calling him daddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> she did not. It's not that kind of book. <laughs> Oh my god, like, I didn't know what to say for a second there. I just was like, my jaw just dropped. Hey, sorry. Um, No, you're good. That was great. (laughs) Oh, fate save me. (laughs) Oh, jeez. So, there was one point where she starts calling him Alec, and he's like, oh, you're you're going to finally just call me by my name and she's like listen don't get comfortable mage like we can go back to your other name and i i can't even remember what she was calling him before but it was freaking hilarious like because she she was like giving him in like a little bit and then he would make a comment about it and she would fully fucking retract and that i yeah i react like that sometimes I know you was... react like that sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, and that's part of like uh, I just loved it. Like the dialogue, the banter, it was so believable. Because I feel like I'm a broken record when I'm saying this, but like sometimes when you're reading a book, it's like she hates him passionately, and then all of a sudden his eyes sparkle and he's the most beautiful thing she's ever seen. But in this one, like she was not budging. She did not budge an inch. And then she said, and then she was like, so apparently, uh, and then she was like thinking to herself and she was like, oh, so apparently she's thought of him as Alec now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I love how much she kicks herself in the ass for different moments too. It's like, she's like, oh, I should have just killed him. And then she's like, but no, I need his help. And then she's like, but you know, I'm going to have to kill him anyways. Why did I start getting attached? yeah oh there was such a great dynamic there i was down for it Mm -hmm. um so i have a question did you have a favorite character yes i did and is it rose i'm just kidding (laughs) honestly i don't think you would actually guess my favorite character was it patrick no was it uh hazel nope was it Wait, hazel um the cop's wife wasn't her name oh. hazel oh Harriet? okay yeah i don't know no you're you <laughs> might, you're right hey, I, was, I think it was, it was hazel. hazel yeah um was it maddie Mm-mm. i'm you're, sorry this is captivating content go ahead <laughs> your you're literally i was gonna say you're literally never gonna guess it um but it was ellie eliana the seer that we meet the- for two seconds for two seconds yep i can dig it she's the one that tells paper where the soft spot in the gate is yes she does but she also asks if she wants to um she asked piper if she wants her to tell her that uh oh my god i'm just gonna fucking read what she says because apparently (laughs) i can't fucking phrase it in a sense that doesn't make me sound like a fucking twat right now <laughs> <laughs> so she says so you prefer me to tell you that he kicks puppies and in his spare time maybe plots the, a, a little empire domination and literally this woman won my heart with that one fucking sentence because it's like so you want me to fucking tell you that he's kicking puppies because that's gonna make you feel better about killing this guy <laughs> Uh, you know what? I totally 100% see why she's your favorite. Yeah. Oh, fucking Miss Snark. I love it. (laughs) But what about Hmm, you? I wonder when she's going to come into play again. 
I hope she does because I didn't like how all of a sudden she was just not in the book anymore. Yeah. She so. up and disappeared. Yeah. Much like everyone else. No fucking explanation. No. Ugh. Drives me Just how I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. There's so much mystery and intrigue. Where is she? For someone who hates mystery so much, you sure do like uh, Agatha Christie a whole lot. Okay, no. I love mysteries that fucking conclude in one book, bro. They conclude. <laughs> There's clues. You can figure out who the fuck killed the person or did what. And, you know, there's an ending. Nope, not for me. Draw that out as long as possible. <laughs> she only draws it out like 200 fucking pages. And I'm like, <laughs> that's who the murderer is? I knew the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god but still it's like i have the gratification of knowing who was the who the asshole was at the end of the book but this one there's so many assholes (laughs) and i still Uh, don't even know what ends up (laughs) i cannot i'm sorry (laughs) I'm I'm on a whole different level tonight. My brain is just like so overwhelmed. It's not even funny. It's okay. It's okay. I love it. Just gonna have a feral day. But go ahead. <laughs> um. So my favorite character was all of them. Um. It was, and I didn't have a favorite favorite. I liked a lot of them. So like. Because of the way that the author wrote the characters, they were all very believable. You know, they all thought and spoke and acted, reacted in a way that was very logical. You know, like Piper had her dynamics, like she or she had her complexity. She was, you know, the cold or not even cold blooded killer. She was an assassin, but she was not cold blooded at all. You know, she kept herself safe by keeping herself um like by not opening up and not giving out too much willy-nilly she had her few people that she trusted and that you know she but everything else was kept close to the chest you know she was consistent which I love because I feel like in a lot of books that they're not consistent um Alexander I loved him because I loved the fact that he didn't just open up but when she asked him questions or she showed interest he would provide information like he was you know he was witty and funny and and engaging with her even when she didn't want to be you know he they had their moments of like sarcasm and like you know that back and forth um Maddie was a little cutie patootie, but she was too small to really have much of a personality. But Caleb had a huge personality and he was very like, very protective over the people that he loved. He was very, you know, he was a kid, but he was also trying to grow up because he saw everything that was going on. Like he had a full on personality. Like I, I loved them all. I love the way that I love the way that she wrote them. I, for some reason, even lore as awful and terrible of a person as we know that he is i'm intrigued by him and i want to i want to read more i don't know man i just love them all i really liked this one i'm glad we read i I guess so like (laughs) wow all right a lot well (laughs) does that mean you have a favorite quote as well um no i loved all of them Oh, I loved okay. every all of the sentences. They were just all my favorite. Okay. Wow. Um, I did write down two of them. One was the um she thought of him as Alec now, and then the other one was Piper shook herself again, brushing off the fog that had descended over her like well, like fog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> What did you have one? 
Um, no, because you also loved them all, didn't you? <laughs> um, there wasn't anything like as far as like a just a single liner that kind of stood out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but that whole there was a whole like section that um I think it was like the beginning of chapter thirty or we kind of briefly talked about it the whole emotion thing you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah did you want to read the section nope okay (laughs) okay listen because my brain's on overload like i know i can't do it because i will get emotional sure and mm -mm, nope yeah will not (laughs) (laughs) no problem um so this is kind of where it comes into play. Remember last week how I said I felt bad sometimes for not having a favorite quote and that I hope that it didn't come across as indicative that I didn't like the book. Mm-hmm. I freaking loved this book and I will purchase the, the uh, actual physical copy and I will read the second and third. Um, and it's so funny to me that I did not have a, a favorite quote because it was written very well. It flowed beautifully. It read gorgeously. But there was not a single quote that kind of stuck out to me other than, you know, those two that I I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, there were a couple of sections that popped, you know, stood out to me. I didn't write them down because they were like full ass, like four paragraphs. <laughs> yeah that that's like one of the reasons that i i wouldn't want to read mine because it's literally like half of the fucking chapter no i'm not saying (laughs) but i mean it it is a good fucking chunk yeah yeah so just everyone who's listening just um know that because we don't have a favorite quote does not mean that we didn't love it and i promise i won't mention that again because this is just the perfect example (laughs) Oh Lord. So what would you say is your overall uh opinion of the book? Overall, I really didn't mind this book. Um, I think that this was a terrible week for me to read this book because I'm emotional. <laughs> and I resonated way too much with some of this. But no, it, it was really written well. I liked it. Yeah, I um I definitely did too. Um, So this book was written by T.F. Johnson. And Johnson is one of our threads. So you can find her on threads at tfjohnson.author. T-F-J-O-H-N-S-O-N dot A-U-T-H-O-R. There's also a link tree, which brings you to her Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, Amazon, email, the whole shebang. She is on Instagram at tfjohnson.author. I would suggest going and subscribing. First of all, this cover, I spoke with her like when she first did, when she did her cover reveal on threads. I love uh, this cover. I think she said that her husband made it. I'm not sure. But it looks like kind of like vintagey, like it lo- looks like a book that's been worn around the edges, and it's just freaking gorgeous. I love how there's a skull. Oh, it's just so stinking cool. It is because it it gives like floral and horror vibes. Like it's like a it's like a pretty death, you know. I don't know if that yeah. comes across right, but pretty no, I death is all saying. I can think that about that. Okay. <laughs> um, you can buy the book right now, um, on Kindle or on Amazon. The Kindle version is three ninety nine. The paperback version is twelve ninety nine. Um, I don't know, man. I'm really excited. So I hope that y'all check her out. Be excited about this book. Yeah. Um, all right, Jen. So what are we, we we reading next week? Literally, I just got the hard copy today. I pre-ordered this book. Um, so it came out on 710. But uh it's called Talisman Teacups and Triss by Kay Starling. Yay! <laughs> so 
listen guys this this is like it's supposed to be like a pride and prejudice turn murder mystery so i'm like really fucking excited about this book which is why i just bought it (laughs) (laughs) yeah i bought mine i pre-ordered it on kindle um and i remember when it for when it came out if it came out a couple days ago and Mm -hmm. i i opened up my kindle app to read the sharp edge of fate and then i saw this one in you know like in my library i was like what yay (laughs) i actually was freaking out because it kept saying that it wasn't showing up until thursday i'm like but i pre-ordered why aren't you coming to me now and then it started (laughs) saying wednesday and then it showed up on my doorstep today and i was so there was a lot of emotions today (laughs) All right, everyone. So thank you so much for listening to another episode of Devilish Bookworms, where we talk about all things books and things going on in our lives and a whole bunch of shenanigans. Um, If you can, go ahead and give us a like and a follow on all of our platforms. Um, We are on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and threads and YouTube. (laughs) and all of the things and we want to talk to you we're most active on threads though so if you have threads just go ahead and give us a follow because we want to say hi we have been getting better on other platforms though so still reach out yes still reach out especially i really want to grow our instagram that's my next goal meanwhile i'm trying to grow our our facebook so we're both working on each end (laughs) dude facts and real quick i just want to say how awesome all of these authors are who are running their all of their own social media accounts and doing the whole thing by themselves because it is not easy with two of us and i don't like i don't want it to come off like i'm bragging that we're there's two of us but like you guys are the real mvps because i couldn't imagine going to work, having a family, doing the whole thing, and then coming home and having to to keep up all of these socials. It's insane. And you guys are the bomb. Facts. Absolute facts. Because, like, I get annoyed after, like, 10 minutes of some of the socials. It, it's so rough, dude. Especially when people are giving hot takes and only hot takes. And we just want to vibe. That's all we want. We just want to (laughs) vibe. I don't know why I had to say that, but okay. (laughs) No, I like it. Keep it. (laughs) Okay. All right, everyone. Well, we will see you next Tuesday. Have a wonderful week. (laughs) Cunt. All right. Bye. Bye.